Hey there, Ryan Kingsline here, and I got a really quick trip, quick trick <laughs> for the environment artists out there. Make sure you head over to GameArtInstitute.com, check out the Environment Artist Boot Camp that is on right now. We're actually running the first opening class of that, and another one is open in September. Got a couple seats left for that. GameArtInstitute.com. Let's see how the new ZBrush can be used in an amazing way. We're going to use it to create a column of concrete, a concrete column that's got some damage in it. So I'm going to, you know what, I'll keep this real simple. You can load any of these projects. Let's just load Polysphere because that's what I normally load when I start ZBrush. And I'm going to come down to Initialize and I'm just going to turn this into a Q cube. Okay, it tells me, hey, you got subdivision levels. So instead of dealing with everything, I'll go Poly Mesh, Q cube, right? Then I'm going to go into Move, Scale, Rotate, doesn't matter. I'm going to scale this up a little bit. I'm going to scale it up. Use this wonderful gizmo that exists right here. And there you go. All right. So now that I've got that, I'm going to turn polyframe on because there's a couple of things to note about how this next step works. We're going to actually use Boolean, but we're going to do some really cool tricks in ZBrush to make this work. The first thing that we're actually going to do is come over and we're going to use Nano Mesh over here. I think I don't got the, uh, the screen draw over there. We're going to use Nano Mesh to create a whole bunch of little circles uh, that can be in different shapes and in different sizes and, and things like that. And we're going to have this just populated with all of these and then use Boolean to subtract those from the form. It's really cool. I was really excited when I did this. But a key thing to do or to know about it is these have to be a little bit more uniform of polygon faces. It's just going to make our life a little bit easier. So I might just go back into draw and I'll go into Z uh, modeler brush and I'll just throw a couple of edges in there. You know, still not quite uniform. That's a little better, I think. I'm just trying to get them square. All right. Now, if I divide this, I get some crazy funky stuff at the top. But notice that I've got poly groups up here. So you can either crease them if you want, which is the ZBrush way to do it. You just say crease poly groups. Or since I have Z Modeler on, I'm going to do it the environment modeler way, which is to try to get some decent um, topology out of it. Now, the way that, uh, let's say, the way that um, this is set up is it's going straight into the middle. So I need to hover over it press the space bar, and I need to deal with whatever's going on here. I need to make sure that um, I'm going to say single edge loop. That's going to give me a little bit more control. Okay, make sure you're on the face, not the face, make sure you're on the edge. There you go. Looks like all of these edges should have a close, some closure. Let's do the bottom. There you go. Now if I divide it, I get a bit of a cleaner edge, right? And whatever that bevel is, you can work that way. So this is one way to do it, okay? But, you know, I'm not going to leave you with just showing you the simple stuff and leaving you all at that. The other way that you can do this is to use that feature inside a ZBrush called Dynamic Subdivision. So I can go into Geometry and go into Dynamic Subdivision. I can just turn Dynamic Subdivision on. Okay, and by default you enter into this smooth proxy mold, mode. Go into Q Grid and you just increase your grid number and a couple of other settings I'm going to get to here in a second but as soon as you go from 0 to 1 you're in a different universe there's a, just a different behavior happening and uh, if we were to well if we were to look at the wireframe of it, it would make sense but we'd have to convert it so let's not do that yet let's see what coverage does notice how coverage becomes sort of like an undo or becomes sort of like a bevel right so either way I can get a softness. I can use this to get a softness on the edge, hard as hell or a little soft. And then I'm not dealing with that topology, trying to get the edging correct and, and all of that stuff. And just, you know, seeing where I can go. You can play with chamfer if you want. It's just a little bit tighter. Uh, let's do chamfer. 
for me, I'm a simple kind of guy. All right, now I'm going to apply that, and when you apply that, it's going to create all this topology for you. Okay, now you want to go an extra bit, because this is a little nutty. Do you see all this extra topology it threw in there? I'm going to now DynaMesh this. There we go. But now I want to DynaMesh this as a bit of a better resolution. And by now you might be thinking, Ryan, why didn't you just stick with the simple topology? Why did you have to go crazy? Right? Because I want to make sure you see all these different options excuse me, all these different options and these ways to do things. So having seen this and gone through all of these different options and processes and whatnot, you know, you can try DynaMesh, you can use that dynamic subdivision um, and then go from there. Uh, but this is really a lot of polygons. So I'm going to try one more thing. I'm going to come in here and I'm going to turn project on and I'm going to keep my resolution low and just say DynaMesh. I'm not freezing my subdivisions, okay? And then let's lower our, our, our sub projection. There we go. Is it working? Maybe I'm gonna lower this down to like 64. All right, how is that holding up? That doesn't look too bad now, if I divide it, I actually still get a decent edge. And I'm going to go with this. For the sake of argument, I don't want necessarily a crisp, clean edge in there. And I have shown you enough crazy. Now we need to get ourselves to business. You know, if I was going to go even crazier, I might come into Z-Remesh and I say, hey, just Z-Remesh this. Keep it roughly the same, but Z-Remesh it, which is going to make the polygons even uh, more evenly distributed. Now, we have Adapt on, so it can lower it, but look at that. Ultimately, I know I started this conversation. I'm going to show you something really cool. What I'm trying to show you here is I don't want you to think about just one method inside of ZBrush. I want you to see topology and geometry as its own tool. And what we're really trying to do here when we get into nano mesh is we're trying to regulate the size of all of this stuff. We're trying to kind of regulate the size to see, you know, how often it can create these polygons. And there's, there's useful parts of this and there's not useful parts, but I want you to see this. Now, the next thing we do is we're going to get in here and just take a look at the basic function that we're looking for here. So what I'm going to do is uh, come into, let's say, uh, the Z Modeler brush, all right? And in the Z Modeler brush, I'm going to hover over one of these polygon faces. I'm going to press the space bar. I'm going to go into Insert Nano Mesh. Okay, and I'll just insert a little point in there. Okay, notice how it comes a ways away from the surface. Let's see if we can unpack why that's happening. Let's go into the brush palette. And most likely it has to do with depth. So if you look with Z Modeler, depth is way out here. So I'm gonna press Control Z to undo that. I'm gonna drag this inside a little bit so it's right there at the surface. And do that all over again. And there you go. Now it's inside the surface itself, okay? That's what we want. Now, let's just take this one little piece. So I'm going to say nano mesh inventory. I'm going to say, hey, one, two, mesh. And what that'll do is get rid of nano mesh and actually convert it into geometry. And so if I press control shift, click, control shift, click and drag. But mindful that there's a little piece left here because that's what it does. It polygroups these things. So I'll come in here to visibility and I'll just say grow selection. And it'll only grow to the contiguous parts, okay? Subtool, split, split hidden. We turn live Boolean on, and then we're just going to remove that piece from it. Let's turn polyframe off. That's what we're looking to have happen. We're looking to have that happened multiple times across a model. So let's put our gyro in. I'm going to unlock it and just click to place it right there. Then I can lock that again. 
And so if we move this around, you know, the, the basic idea is we would have a whole bunch of these. And I can just kind of quickly create a whole bunch of chunks by control, clicking, and dragging. But instead of it being like this, where it's a square, what we would want is we would want this to be in, um, let's say, circles or in triangles or some other shape. So let's turn this to additive. Okay, let's see how many polygons are. Let's divide these guys. Just, you know, it's a little trick turns them into spheres for the most part. And now we've got these little pot marks that we can populate all over the surface. So check this out. Now I'm going to start the whole process. Now I'm just going to delete this. And we want to have for this to work, so we don't have to do that whole splitting thing. We want to have a base mesh. So we're going to have a base and that's going to go right there. Then we're going to have a subtraction that'll go as a separate subtool. And then we're going to want an addition that's going to be a separate subtool. All right. So the easiest way to do that is you just take this piece right here and you're just going to duplicate it once, twice, and you can rename these. So I'll rename this and I'll say, hey, this is sub. I'm going to rename this. I'm going to say, this is add. There you go. And let's rename this top one. And we're going to say, this is base. Okay. Now, in the, the add, I'm going to turn off. In the sub, with the sub selected and with this guy on, there's just one other thing I need to do. I need to add, just for the sake of argument to make my life a little simpler, I need to add some sort of sphere up in here. Or, you know, maybe we can do it in the way it was before. No, you know, no, no. Let's, let's do this right. Let's do this right. I'm going to select a polysphere. Let me undo some of the history on that, or we'll just bring another one in. So I'm going to say, uh, select this. I'm going to go Sphere 3D. I'm going to say, make that a poly mesh, and try to s reconstruct the subdivs. It says, hey, there's triangles. You can't do that. So then I might come in here and try to say, Decimation Master, pre-process this, and then Decimation Master, reduce this polygon count. Right? I need this polygon count reduced a lot. So I'm going to set this down to 1%. I'm going to set this down to 0.5%. There you go. That's starting to look a little bit better. Okay, and with this selected here on the screen and Z Modeler as my brush, I simply go into the Brush Palette, and at the top, I'm going to say From Mesh. And what that does is adds this right in here. Now I'm going to do something else. I'm going to try to convert or try to find a little bit of a triangle. Let's come in here and see, is there any of these primitives that would work in some kind of triangular um, way? You know what, we can probably just make one. Let's select a poly mesh. I'm gonna come down here into the initialize. I'm gonna convert that into a cube. But then with that cube, I'll use just, it might be easy because I don't need it to be very special. I might just convert it like that. That way it gets to be a bit of a wedge. Pull these little pieces out and in. And there you go. Let me get that out. Let's get that out. Okay. Okay, and then we may just shrink that in. All right, and scale that out. This will be kind of interesting for cracks. So move. Let's go into the Z Modeler brush, and I'll just be looking at this from, a, from the top. And again, brush palette from mesh. So I've got the Z Modeler, and it's got one, two extra little meshes that I can use in there. And I'll come back into my model, press F to frame it. And let's go into Subtools. Our sub is selected. We're in live Boolean mode. I've got the Z Modeler brush selected. I'm going to hover over a face. And I'm going to say insert nano mesh, all polygons. Okay, this isn't the one I want yet. So make sure you select the sphere. That's the first one I want. Okay, remember earlier, this is quite some distance. So let's set this within, this, within the body of the, of the form itself. There we go. And now, if we wanted to, let's make these a little smaller. Let 
we can turn cut on. Okay. Our true subtraction. There you go. Okay, not the intersection, but let's, well, this is the intersection. Just a little funky. Then we come in here into nano mesh. We can increase the scale of these after the fact. We can do a lot to vary the width so that they become almost cracks in and of themselves. Then we can adjust the offset so that they're at a different height. We can adjust all of this. And so we just, I add a little bit to the X offset, a little bit to the Y offset, then I add a lot to the variation. Then I add a little to the rotation and a lot to the variation. But really, the real meat and potatoes is if I come in here and I add random distribution. Okay, random distribution is quite powerful, but it's not the most powerful thing. I mean, look at this. That's pretty cool, I think. That's some pretty powerful stuff. Okay, and in fact, before I show you the next thing, I'm going to just add on to our, um, to our process here a little bit. Um, but there's one thing that's bugging me. What is it with this intersection, whereas it should be cutting things out? Let's switch this back to cut. And I believe there's one problem that we're facing. Show placement is on. And because show placement is on, that rectangular shape is literally cutting itself out of the rectangular shape. Okay, so be mindful, be a little cautious, a little careful. And here you go. Okay, let's do our adding on part right now. And so the way I'm going to do this is come into this nano mesh. And I can come in and just add here. You know, not a big problem, but I could also just duplicate this subtool. So I'm going to duplicate this subtool. So it's already got nano mesh on it, right? And I'll leave it as an add in here. It's also been shrunk in, you know? So let's just rename this, add, and we can delete this previous one because we've already got this kind of pre set up for us. So uh, let's turn this, let's go in here and I'm just going to say, whoop, make sure that stays there. Let's turn this off. Live Boolean is on. So I'm going to come up into this. There we go. Got to unselect it. Get yourself out of there, otherwise it's still visible. So here's the subtracted one. And then if I come in here and I go into the add, right, we have this similar problem. So I'm going to press F to frame this. I'm going to go into scale, and I'm going to just scale this down a bit. And then I can go and just double check this. There you go. So it looks like I had to scale it down. But also, it looks like you can see these little, uh, these little pieces that are right there inside of those other pot marks, which is kind of fascinating because think of it this way. You could actually come in here, increase the size of your subtraction. So I'm going to increase the size of the subtractions like that. And then I'm going to come into my additions. And I'm going to do something a little bit different with the additions. I'm going to come into this alignment thing, or where is my repeat? Ah, oh, it's tile. It's not under alignment. Sorry, it's under tile. So I'm going to actually tile these multiple times within this. And it's a little tricky because I'm using up a ton of resources. So let's set this to 2 and then V tile to 2. And then uh, I like the idea of so. And I'm going to set it to 3, 3. And then I'm going to increase the size of them. Because as you tile them, they get much, much, much smaller in size. Much smaller in size. Okay, so we can get this like extra detail in there, but I don't know. Now, 
it's quite, there's a lot, <laughs> there's, there's a big mess, you know. It's kind of interesting. So let's undo some of that stuff. I just thought this might be a nice little detour for us to take. Uh, I'm going to set that to 1, and I'll set that to 1. And uh, let's go back into our subtractions, and uh, let's decrease the size of this a little bit. We don't need it to be all that crazy. And we'll go into our additions. Nano mesh, and we'll decrease the size of that so it fits a little bit nicer. Basically just trying to create similar sized noise. Now, at this point, what I'll do, because I don't want these to fit in there in, in this exact way, I'm really just trying to take levels of noise and do different elements with it. So I know this number, 6.73. I'm just going to kind of vary this around a little bit, you know, to get a, a different result out of this. And then I might take my seed, because I want them to be in a different position, and move my seed around. So I get, I get positives, and I get negatives, which is kind of fascinating, all right? I think this is really a cool thing. But here, there's an old school way to do this. It's been around for a while. That's not nano mesh. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to come back to the base and I'm going to get rid of all the other stuff. And I'm going to divide this a few times till it gets over a million polygons. So divide it once, twice, three times. So there we go, 3.2 million polygons. I'm going to come into surface. I'm going to turn noise on. And I've already kind of been playing with this. So let me edit this and I'll uh, set everything back to normal. The key thing that you've got to do when you set up noise is the first step is you kind of find the right scale. So let's zoom in a little bit. Is that the right scale? A little tiny or is this going to be the right scale? Right, Find the right scale, let's say about 0.1, then you got to really adjust the strength. And the strength you're going to maybe have to go back and forth on. So we hit OK. All right. That's a good, nice, clean surface, but it's too small. And this is one of the things with this material, it showcases this. I, you're, if you were to 3D print this, you wouldn't even notice that level of, uh, of detail. You need to really push this up. And I think to really hone it in, I'm going to increase the noise. So it's got to be more aggressive than you think. And now you can apply this to the mesh. The cool thing is that you can apply noise a couple of times. So I'm going to actually put noise on there again. I'm going to edit this. And now I'm going to come in here with these, with this very special curve. This is something I used to teach. I mean, this is ancient. This is really old. I used to teach this almost 10 years ago. Let's drag that little guy off. Okay, so that looks good. Let's go into our strength. We're going to go into our noise scale. Okay, and we're really close in, so let's just zoom out a little bit and get a bit of a better eye on that. And I'm going to pull that up a little bit so we get a little bit more. go and hit OK and this has added in some little tiny divots and made some really nice beautiful form right I want a little bit deeper into those holes so I'm going to take this and just go a little deeper and I'm going to increase that strength until it just looks inappropriate there you go let me see if I can go a little bit deeper Okay, I like that, but scale is too large, or too small really, or I don't know. Let's put it at two and see. Okay, I'll be okay with that. Now apply to mesh. Now when you apply to mesh, there's going to be some give, some take. Okay, so but look at this. 
All that stuff that we were kind of thinking we'd do with Boolean, we do here. But now Boolean just adds this extra layer on top of this. Because we used to come in and say we might select, uh, oh, I don't know, let's say the standard brush. And uh, let's come into, where did the standard brush go? And we'll go into a spray stroke and we'll go into an alpha like this. And, and we might start to kind of lower the Z intensity and subtract that. Um, or we might come in with uh, like a uh, drag rectangle, you know, and break things up like that. That's a really small uh, process. But let's see, live Boolean is on. We're going to turn this guy on. So we can get a, get a sense out of how this works. Okay, so in fact, let's turn that off. And let's just go into it. So I can go into it, out of it. Okay, I'm going to turn the color on on this guy so it actually holds it a little better. And now I can art direct this a little bit more. So I can come in here and say, okay, we probably don't need all of that random distribution. Right? And on top of that, um, we could probably adjust some of the behavior in here so that this is just not so deep. So. We could increase the size, maybe lower our random distribution way, way, way down. And then uh, really increase this stuff to just make this really different. Um, height or depth. We could lower that, but this is already rotated, so you actually don't know which one of these is really the most functional. But as I come through here and I adjust, you know, it's pretty fascinating what you can kind of do. Okay. Since we're dealing with spheres, I'm going to come in here and I'm going to just take these down a notch. These guys, the um, Z offset and the rotation. That's going to give me a little bit more control over what height does. See, now height is functioning more as a depth map because I've just kind of limited the amount of my rotation. All right. Now I can make these even larger, but because I'm controlling the, um, the height, I can wipe them away as well. And if I want them to just be a little bit more, there's a million different things that we can do here, right? Let's turn that to one. OK. So we're kind of going back and forth, and I'm getting this a little bit simplified. But I'm going to take my height, and I'm going to just try to get like a better depth. That's something that's not too extreme. I'm going to get a patterning or an amount of them that's not too extreme. And then I might try to find a size that works, and then get that height in there. Let's take that variation down a bit. You can also change your rotations, right? So you see the rotation making a difference here? So a lot of these factors come in. Kind of like that. But Okay, going to hell in the hand basket real quick. Size became a real big problem for us. Get that height back in there. Let's get our random seeds down. Can we align these? These do various things, but it's not going to be all that relevant for what we're doing right here. But let's take our size down. Because all we really want to do is just add a little bit more realism into these tiny little pieces. 
just add a little bit to it. Um, so we can come back in and do some rotation so that we get more of that kind of crazy lines. Uh, or we just give a little bit of rotation, like a, a 1 and a 1, and then we let this X variation do a lot of the work for us in the Y variation. Okay. All right. So let's push that in. Then we can come all the way through. There we go. Somewhere around like that. Okay. And if you want, there's a lot of things. Well, no, let's just leave it like this. I don't want to complicate your life with all these, all the potential. But there you go. Now we can come in to our subtraction, or our addition, I should say, sorry. And let's check the addition. So is it adding anything to the equation? Kind of. Let's come into nano mesh. Let's increase the size of these guys. And it's just going to add these little granules that, um, you know, might, it might have been missing. Uh, and it'll give it a real crazy, amazing textured surface. I mean, it's just, it's just awesome. So we can make that a little bit less. There we go. And I think we're pretty solid. We've got something that's subtracted. We've got something that's been added to it. And on top of that, the base mesh has the old process as well with the surface and noise. So now what we got to do, and this took me some time to find it. We got to come in here to Boolean. It was different in the beta testing. So you go to Subtool, Boolean, Boolean, and you go, hey, let's make it. Um, uh, a sub let's make it a, uh, uh, a Boolean mesh. All right, we can allow dynamic subdivision levels, which is, uh, or subdivisions, which is going to be kind of like a form of decimation. So it'll be more in different places and less in others. But there you go. Click the button. Let it do its union mesh thing. Let it take its time. Okay, and here we go. Now, this is the original mesh. Nothing changed here. But if we go into the tool inventory area, you'll see union mesh, union base. Okay, we can select that. And there's going to be some color variations, things like that. So you got to just be mindful that there's some variety in there that you got to think about. So this is a pretty crazy, gnarly surface. Okay, now I can come in and let's just say store a morph target so that I've got the original shape. And then you can come in and just do a little bit of crazy on it with the brushes. So we could come in with say, I don't know, like an H polish brush, for example. Let's press H to find that brush. Okay, and then um, you could probably put that on a spray stroke, although it kind of has a weird behavior um, if it's on spray. So let's come into drag and you can tap it. Basically what we do with this H polish is it kind of smooths everything out, right? So what I could do is tap into these different areas to start to kind of make it a little bit cleaner. Now let me undo this. And if you were to store these inside of a layer, number one, save ZBrush. Save this thing because we are dealing with enormous amounts of geometry I'm gonna and with layers I I'm always skeptical of layers but anyways we're in a record mode on a layer so the cool thing about layers is number one you can dial them up and you can dial them down so you don't have to be as careful with them 
as you might have had to um, with just a morph target. Okay, the other thing that's really cool about layers, I'll show you here on another side, or I'll show you in this layer, let's say. Get really nice and tight on that edge. Okay, that's about enough, I think. Okay. You can invert it. So instead of smoothing it out, we would make it even crazier, right? Which will have a use that will absolutely have a use for you, but I'm gonna set it down here. And let's say um, we wanna increase that. So we wanna, we wanna continue that smoothing that I did. That's another way. So you can invert it, you can continue it so that it does even more, or you can just simply dial it down and dial it back, like set it at about a point, oh, I don't know, let's say set it at a point six. Okay, point 0.8. And then that keeps things all relatively simple, clean, and crazy beautiful. Now, you want to try something for extra credit. <laughs> Come in here and see if you can start to create cracks across the surface of this. Imagine, let's say, appending a poly let's say a little star here. I'm going to take this star and I'm going to scale this thing way, 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 way down so that it barely exists. Okay? Barely exists. And then I'm going to come in and uh, let's switch over into an insert brush, like say an insert boolean or let's say insert basic. And I'll go, okay, and I'm going to just insert this right here and then I'll use move and scale this in. Uh, let's use these guys right there. All right, perfect. And then we say I want to subtract that. Cool, right? Fun, neat. Are we done? Hell no. Come in here with the clay buildup brush, some spray, and sculpt the crap out of that. I don't even know what that, what that sphere looks like anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Let's take a look at what the sphere looks like as soon as this thing quick starts saving. So there you go. But how cool is this to be able to go in and add this next level stuff? And let's just grab that and go all the way up. And there we go. We can grab that. And then, I don't know, let's go into snake hook. Grab little pieces of this that we can then pull throughout it. Make sure that we're pulling it through, you know. There you go. And why don't we come in with this little alpha like alpha 58. I'm going to increase my draw size. And why don't we just divide this guy even more so we can get some more power in here. And then let's come in with the blob brush with an alpha like that and a spray stroke. And then another. And what in the hell did we just do? All right, my friend, I hope you learned something. I hope this was cool. I got to get off and do a webinar right now. Remember, my ZBrush certification course is at zbrushworkshops.com. That's what we do. It's what we focus on. There's some really cool stuff happening, so make sure you go over there and check that out. Gameartinstitute.com has the Environment Artist Boot Camp where you decide if you're going to do hard surface or organic, and you have some amazing mentors walking you through the creation of your portfolio piece. All right, now, con Character Artist Boot Camp is there as well, and... Uh, it's just I'm very excited to be able to offer these things to you. I have some great mentors. It's making a difference in people's lives. Lyle just got a job directly from the stuff that he did in that class. It has the potential to make a difference in your life. So make sure you check out what I'm doing in these different locations. Enjoy and happy Z brushing.